In the renewable energy competition, hydrogen is a late starter, despite being the most abundant element on the periodic table. Many other renewable technologies have dominated headlines for years, but hydrogen's production and storage issues keep it from becoming an everyday reality for many. However, with recent advancements, green hydrogen is just a step away. What are these advances that will mitigate the negative effects of hydrogen, and how effective are they? Hydrogen can be found everywhere. In the universe, it's the most recurrent element, yet it's also one of our most clinging elements. It's like a baby who's been fed exclusively by mum. Hydrogen is one of the best energy carriers we have since it easily connects to other elements. Moreover, it's immaculately maintained. Some of you may be curious as to just how clean it is. For clarity, if a small amount of oxygen is added to a fuel cell, hydrogen power produces solely water as a byproduct. Hydrogen can be obtained from a variety of sources, including fossil fuels and biomass. However, because hydrogen is clinging, you must separate it from other elements before it can be used alone. And this is the source of hydrogen's poor energy efficiency, as it requires a significant amount of both energy and time. It takes more energy to make hydrogen than you receive out of it, and this is a significant loss when compared to other power systems such as electric vehicle batteries. From beginning to end, you're losing around 60% of it. It's also important to consider where we acquire our energy from. There are three types of hydrogen power. Grey hydrogen, for example, is powered by fossil fuels. Carbon capture and grey hydrogen techniques are two ways to produce blue hydrogen. Green hydrogen, on the other hand, is produced using renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power. Obviously, we're going for green. The problem is that it's a lot easier in theory than it is in practice. The two primary methods of obtaining green hydrogen are by the use of an electrolyzer driven by renewable sources, also known as a power-to-gas P2G technology, and the steam reforming of biogas either with or without carbon capture. Although steam reforming of natural gas now generates most hydrogen electricity, natural gas itself is a scarce and highly sought-after resource. However, the use of electrolyzers has been a notoriously expensive and inefficient method of producing hydrogen gas. Hydrogen production, storage, and transportation necessitate a fresh and novel approach. Has the efficiency of these systems improved as a result of recent technical advancements? The Hysata capillary-fed electrolyzer, for example, unlike the polymer electrolyte membrane PEM technology, this electrolyzer introduces a unique approach to the process. Even though PEM is a great idea, it's still a waste of time. In comparison to alternative technologies like batteries, hydrogen can store more energy per pound, but it also drains power at every step. You're continually losing potential energy when you try to protect the smallest element on the planet from physically seeping through the cracks, from its birth in electrolysis to its final resting place in a fuel cell. So what's the best way to stop the bleeding? If Hysata is correct, they may have discovered the culprit and the solution. Do you want to make a guess? Bubbles, as you might have guessed wrong, are the culprit. Yes, of course, recall that electrolysis produces hydrogen and oxygen from the breakdown of water. Non-conducting bubbles in the electrolyte solution build up on the electrodes, obstructing sections of the electrode and slowing down the process, lowering efficiency. PM allows the cathode side of the electrolyte to continue flowing to the electrolyte, which can make hydrogen gas by bubbling it through a liquid. But Hysata's capillary-fed electrolyzer goes much further. They use a reservoir at the bottom of the cell to keep the electrolyte separate from the anode and cathode until it's pulled through an inter-electrode separator, which is both porous and hydrophilic. Capillary action is the term for this. In the same way that water flows up a straw when the pressure changes, so do this. These are potentially big consequences to this very simple physics. As a result, the electrolyte maintains direct touch on one side alone, and the gases are still created without the irritating bubbling action that obstruct the process. Because no water is pulled to the electrolyte side, the other side can continue to release gas uninhibited. The capillary action naturally draws up more water to replace the water electrolyzed out of the separator, keeping everything functioning smoothly. So without those pesky bubbles in the way, how efficient can these electrolyzers be? It can be high as 98%, according to Hysata's peer-reviewed study. That's more than 10% higher than the efficiency of a current, state-of-the-art commercial electrolyzer, which is only 83%. If these capillary-fed electrolyzers can reach gigawatt-scale production by 2025, as their CEO claims, they may just fill the gap in the market for a less expensive, more efficient electrolyzer, which is exactly what hydrogen power requires to get off the ground. Of course, it's not just Hysata competing in the race to enhance electrolyzers. Korean Institute of Science and Technology KIST, researchers claim to have tested a novel type of membrane that solves the problem of electrolyzer production corrosiveness. Proton exchange membrane PEMs are used in most electrolyzers to allow positively charged hydrogen ions to pass through to the cathode and eventually combine with electrons to generate hydrogen gas. Unfortunately, this acidic environment is extremely demanding on equipment, necessitating the use of costly metals such as platinum, ruthenium, or iridium in electrodes. On their separator plates, they use titanium as well. One of the significant expenditures is the usage of these platinum group metals, PGMs, as a catalyst to speed up the reaction. These catalysts are very expensive, can be poisoned by numerous impurities in the input gas stream, such as carbon monoxide or other gases that may be pollutants. However, this problem is typically addressed by switching to anion exchange membranes, AEMs. Negatively charged hydroxide ions pass through these membranes and electrode assemblies and recombine to form water molecules at the anode, allowing hydrogen atoms to gravitate towards the cathode. 
Unlike their PEM counterparts, AEMs can operate in even alkaline conditions without the need for expensive metal catalysts. AEMs, on the other hand, haven't quite found their footing in the market owing to their poor performance and proclivity for breaking down. KIST recently conducted tests on a new membrane and electrode assembly that outperformed their AEM counterparts by a factor of 6 and lasted 10 times as long. It even performed 20% better than existing PEM technology. They achieved this in part by increasing the specific surface area of the structure and combining it with ion-conducting PFAP-based compounds.